In Cancun, the first day of negotiations allows the various delegations from Africa, Europe and the United States to make contact. There are no leaks about what was said, but the serious business has begun. The ministers of trade are doing the talking. The ministers of development and cooperation have been politely asked to leave. But the German minister makes a final statement before boarding the plane to fly back to Europe. I cannot imagine that there are countries, even if they are as big as the United States, in which people are not feeling sympathy with those who suffer and with those who are put under unfair um, competition. And I mean, that's the sense of uh, free trade, you know, all should have the same possibilities. Ministers of Trade and Agriculture are more powerful than Ministers of Development. And I think that's something that Ministers of Development learned in Cancun. They'd been very talkative in Cancun, and after the conference, when they got back home, the other ministers told them to keep quiet. The African ministers were caught unawares by their opponents' change of heart. Still caught up in the initial euphoria of the early days, on the second day of talks they arrive at the negotiating table feeling sure of success. From the beginning, we thought that our good faith and the fact that we had right on our side, both in terms of principles and morals and the figures, could not be questioned by anybody. So we were mainly banking on the fact that our claim was right and that the figures we were presenting were unquestionable. There was virtually nothing to negotiate. And the WTO has the toughest decision-making process of any organization that I know of. Literally complete consensus. Everybody has to agree on everything. Now, this actually gives small countries some power, but it also implies some responsibility on the small countries. At the end of the day, you have to exercise some qualitative judgment about how far and how long and how extreme you want to push your case. I would say that the Africans, but also myself, we allowed ourselves to get caught up in the atmosphere and the sympathy, not only from the press, but also from the various delegations and the various statements from all the countries. It all led us to believe that we'd gone further than we actually had. The end of the day brings the first real blow for the Africans. Europe has switched loyalties. But before Cancun, Commissioner Lamy had been extremely sympathetic to the Africans, who were counting on him as an ally who would help overturn American resistance. The European Union shares the concerns of the Western and Central African countries on the extremely low prices of cotton on the world markets. It is true that the European Union supports its own cotton producers, but total production is negligible, which leads us to believe that our support system has no impact on world prices. In Europe, they saw that resistance to a complete reform of the support system of cotton was greater than they thought, so they became tougher on the negotiations. I think that Mr Lamy was being sincere when he contradicted himself from one meeting to another because the position was changing. The power struggle between trade, agriculture and development was changing in Cancun. To conceal internal contradictions, the Europeans shipped the problem by asking the Americans to make the first move. It was a way of settling their scores with the Americans by using the Africans as a burden. They wanted to show that they were very close to the Africans by saying, yes, we're ready to reduce subsidies if the Americans make the first move. But they knew the Americans 
would never do that. On the morning of the last day of negotiations, the Africans, still convinced that they are in the right, stick to their guns. The cotton uh, producers, the Africans in particular, uh, snubbed uh, the big guys and said, no way, Jose, are we going to do this deal without our interests being taken into account? I think that was also part of the Africans' problem, because actually they were right to say we're going to get something because everyone understands our problem, which wasn't the case. The discussions have become meaningless. The Americans are acting as if they don't understand what is being discussed and keep dodging the questions. Here in Cancun, we have discussed with the four countries the idea of proposing a separate, comprehensive sectoral initiative. This would start with raw cotton and include man-made fiber, textile, and clothing trade. That afternoon, a first draft of the final resolution is published. The issue of cotton subsidies is not mentioned. The first draft that has just been published is not final. It's only a first draft. They're talking about synthetic fibers, about textiles and clothing, about the opening of markets, as if we didn't have any markets. The problem has been shifted. It's a kind of diversion. I think that the arguments used were an element of the negotiations to see how the Africans would react. The African group will work even more closely together to strike back and to continue to defend its interests and win its case. It's true that the African group is very tight-knit, but Chad has an ambiguous position towards the Americans. They're rivals on cotton, but partners on oil. The plus grand project in Africa subsaharienne the biggest project in sub-Saharan Africa is Chad oil production. The United States has been the pillar of that project. Once again, I'm very grateful for the relationship we have with the United States of America. The conference is drawing to a close. After the publication of the draft resolution, discussions resume in a final attempt to reach an agreement. There's still optimism in the African camp. They do their utmost to convince themselves that anything could still happen. If this conference did fail, I'd say it would be like a father forgetting about his son. For me, America and the European Union are uh, almost the father of the African countries. Yes, the conference ends tomorrow. It'll be a long night. I think we're dealing with very sensible people.